and uh, that's a bit of a nuisance. So here we go. We um, first of all we'll um, we'll just take off as much metal as we can towards the bottom pivot end, so that um, whilst it's fairly thick still, you know we, uh, we we remove the metal and get rid of it because we don't need all this metal down the bottom here, and uh, we can't take uh, serious cuts. Uh, because we're only holding it by quite a small area. Now, the best way to do this is to work towards the collet rather than uh, anything else uh, so that uh, any tendency for the staff to walk out of the collet is uh, counteracted by the uh, uh, pressure you're putting on the, on the work towards the collet. because we know we've got quite a way to go about measurements or anything yet. But this idea of making the staff a bit longer than you actually need can uh, get you out of a lot of holes because sometimes when the roller heights are critical as they are in, uh, in with this type of roller it's uh, quite convenient to have a little room to uh, adjust things and uh, you can get the end shape just right and uh, so that when you come to uh, a slim watch where the cl clearances are very close on some watches uh, you've got that bit of latitude to end up with the uh, the wheel clearing the centre wheel nicely and uh, not touching the pallet cock and uh, you, know, you see terrible things uh, happen on occasions when people have made that mistake they they bend the balance wheel up and they try and dish the centre wheel and uh, do all sorts of things which uh, wouldn't have been necessary if they had had a little bit of foresight when the staff was being made just to uh, get the heights right. I know it can be that uh, when you're working on a staff, the actual producing the producing the staff is a is the quickest part of the operation. It's adjusting it and getting it to run nicely in the watch that takes the time. And uh, but if you've uh, Take that into consideration when you've uh, when you've done your initial inspection. You should be able to uh, save yourself a lot of time by getting it right first time. Take the roller and present it to the uh, to our turned arbor. I don't know if, I, if many of you have little trays on your T-Rest but I personally couldn't live without one. I made this tray a long long while ago and uh, uh, I regularly change the piece of cardboard in the bottom there and uh, I find that uh, it saves a lot of problems. I have also <coughs> I also have another tray which fits underneath the lathe um, and uh, I use that, as I quite often have to work in precious metals, I use that to collect the swarf. But um, that can be useful too when you're, you're turning small parts and uh, have this tendency to leap off and uh, it's, it, uh, it's an added... And of course I, I wear a, uh, a selvet actually, a large selvet, as an apron under the lathe, uh, which also is a, another backstop saving because that, that can be dropping small parts they're not so bad when they're this size but when they're very small and if you're trying to work 
fairly smartly. You don't want to be spending time looking for them. Well, it's getting quite slender now at this end, so we'll, we'll just see. We're keeping this tapered process going so that uh, we know that we won't be getting too small in the finished area. We just take the roller and uh, see how we're doing. Yes, well, it's just starting to enter. Now, <coughs> normally I, I wouldn't use tweezers to hold a roller like this because um, uh, it, it can be another insecurity. Of course, if I was Michael, I wouldn't think twice about it, but uh, remembering his expertise with the jewel hole at arm's length in his tweezers, I, uh, I wouldn't take that, that kind of risk. But, um, so I find that uh, Rodoco, or beeswax as we used to use, uh, is, uh, is a much safer way of handling small things near the lathe. There's nothing more frustrating than to uh, do all the work on the turning and then drop something like the roller and spend <laughs> ages trying to find it. So uh, I'll try and work as defensively as possible. Now this is working its way nicely up the taper here. Yes, of course, this roller to me is a bit of a, a large item, more like a small flywheel. So uh, I, I feel quite confident to uh, manipulate that with the tweezers. I'm just uh, finishing off the uh, underside of the uh, balance seating so that we've got the the depth at which the uh, the roller is to arrive at or to uh, to seat at, because in this case the roller doesn't uh, sit close up against the balance seat. There is a turned shoulder below the seat, so we just want to get that get that the right length. And uh, so we just. Establish that now. Putting the sh chamfer on the bottom of the balance seat. And we'll run down that collar that the roller cuts up against. I think that's, that's about right. Holding the pattern is a little bit difficult uh, in this direction because um, it's got to be a bit of guessing because you can't get right close to the seat because of the length of the staff. And you won't go down one of the sawn slots in the uh, in the collet, so you've just got to guess it. But of course, if you've got to guess it, you can uh, you can uh, always overestimate it a little bit and then adjust it later. Now you can see what's happened here. I've uh, dropped the roller into the T-rest. That's because, uh, but uh, all's well. It hasn't gone out of sight. Perhaps there's a lesson there. I should uh, should be using the uh, Rodoco rather than the uh, than the tweezers. That's uh, Telling you how confident I was with its this size, but there we are. The roller's running down the taper nicely. We continue the continue the taper turning. Taking very light cuts, we're getting a nice finish now. Another check again. 
can put my thumb over the gap this time so as it can't drop into that hole. No, we're all right. We've got quite a little way to go. But another thing, because we've got quite a shallow angle on this, you have to be a little bit careful because uh, it will move down this taper quite quickly. There you are, you can see it's moved a considerable distance down the taper. We don't want to go right up to the shoulder. We'll get a bit closer so that we've just got a little bit of uh, interference fit left to uh, so that it goes on tapped on tight. Now you can, if you like, um, lap this last bit with the wigwag, of course, and uh, you know it. it um, especially if you've got a number of uh, pieces to fit, some rollers uh, come in three bits, and uh, you've got um, three parts to fit. Well, obviously you don't want to take any chances because uh, if you overdo it. I'm afraid there's very little you can do but start again. Now we're gradually getting closer. So you could quite easily lap this last portion. I'm just, uh, just taking it off with the graver, feeling confident. So with that, we, I won't go down any lower, we could just tap it up that our last little bit because there's not much of a taper there, it's very shallow and there's just an interference fit there so that would uh, hold the roller nicely. Now we set about making the bottom pivot. We just check again, uh, it's always best to check and see where our pivot's got to be. Well we've got, um, we've got quite a little bit of material there, we could, yeah, to uh, uh, 